If the Vedas do not permit idol worship, they do not at the same time prohibit it. And if they prohibit it, it shows that the existence of idolatry is implied. Because there is no prohibition possible unless there exists something to be prohibited. This is a question put forward uh, to Maharshi Dhanan Saraswati. Maharshi Dhanan Saraswati answers, Permission is not there and prohibition is also of worshipping any other object in place of Almighty God. Is there never a prohibition without the previous existence of a practice? Maharishi says, Andan tamaha pravishanti ye asam bhutim upasate tato bhuya ivate tamo yavu sambhutyam rataha. Those who worship in the place of Almighty God, the uncreated beginningless prakriti, which is called as materia radika in English, they fall into darkness, that is, they fall into ignorance and misery. And those who worship the effects of prakriti, that is this universe creation such as earth and other elements, stones, trees, etc. and the bodies of men and the other animals in the place of God, they fall into even greater darkness. That is, those most ignorant people fall into the hell of miseries and for a very long time suffer very painful afflictions. So this is a prohibition in the Vedas. And also, Ajurveda. 32 by 3 says, Natasya Pratima Asti, of that formless God who is pervading through the whole universe, there cannot be an image, size, likeness or idols. And then from the Upanishad, Kain Upanishad, it says, Yad Vacha Nab Yuditam Yena Vagab Yudyate Tadeva Brahmatvam Vidhi Nedam Yadidam Upasate. He who is not the object of the comprehension of the tongue, but with whose support and influence the tongue does it work. Know him as the Almighty God and worship him. Whatever is other than that God is not worthy of worship. For example, God cannot be described like other things. Other things We say, here is water, take it. But we cannot in the same way say, here is Almighty God, grasp him. Next statement from the Ikean Upanishad is, Yen manasa na manute yena hurmano matam. Tadeva Brahmatvam Vidhi Nedam Yadidam Upasate He who cannot be comprehended by mind and yet know the mind, know him as the only Almighty God. Him alone do thou worship. Whatever is different from this God, that is soul and internal organs, is not a fit of object of worship. Next statement from Kien Upanishad is Yet Chakshushana Pashyati Yena Chakshunshi Pashyanti Tadeva Brahmatvam Vidhi Nedam Yadidam Upasate He who is not visible to the eye and through whom all the eyes see, know him as the only God and him alone is worthy of worship and do not worship those objects which are different from him. For example, sun, electricity, fire, etc. Next statement from Kien Upanishad is Yet shotrena na shunoti yena shotram idam shutam tadeva brahmatvam vidhi nedam yadidam mupasate. He who is not audible to the ear and by whose help the ear hears, know him as the only God. Him alone is worthy of worship and do not worship in his place those objects which are different from him, that is sound, etc. Next point from Kain Upanishad is. Yet pranena na praniti yena pranaha praniyate tadeva brahmatvam vidhi nedam yadidam mupasate. He who is not movable by the vital air and with whose actuation the vital air works, know him as the only God. Him alone is worthy of worship. Do not worship the air which is different from him. So, Maharishi writes, these and many other clear prohibitions of idol worship are there in the Vedic scriptures. Those practices which exist are prohibited and those which do not exist are also prohibited sometimes. For instance, if a man is sitting, you can ask him to go away. Here you have prohibited an action which actually existed. That is, he was sitting now and you say do not sit any longer. But you can also prohibit those actions which do not exist at all. For example, you say to your son, my dear son, you shall never steal. You shall not jump into the well. 
you shall not associate with the wicked you shall not remain uneducated these practices whose prohibition has been enjoined are unknown to the man but known to almighty god therefore idol worship is worthy of condemnation what a beautiful example what a beautiful explanation by marushi dhanan saraswati i hope you understood we should we should avoid idol worship if we need the mercy of almighty god if we need the path to enlightenment and the only way almighty god very clearly says in purusha sukta the only way to achieve almighty god is the vedic way there is no other second path thank you so much namaste om